How many of you have sat frustrated in maths class and thought to yourselves, I'm still waiting for the day I use this in real life? <laughs> You're quite right. Maths isn't essential for survival, like air or water. Then again, neither are movies or music or most of the things that you use every day. But uh, let us agree then that there is far more to life than survival. An appreciation of beauty and a search for deeper meaning amongst a few of those other things that we, as human beings, cannot live without. And if you want to find meaning, I suggest you take another, but this time deeper, look at mathematics. What does all this talk of beauty and meaning have to do with maths? Well, let's observe this subject from a different perspective and find the answer to that question. I am Swadha Pandey and I am here to talk about the misunderstood art of mathematics. Let me repeat that, the art of mathematics. We've all been deceived into believing that maths is just a science. It is not. Maths is the ultimate masterpiece of art, philosophy and harmony. But most of the world believes that mathematics is simply arithmetic a way of adding and multiplying big numbers. But really, that's like saying nuclear fusion is just a way to power the toasters in your kitchen. The problem with us is that we simply refuse to be amazed by the subject. In fact, these days, we refuse to be amazed by anything that isn't virtual. But when mathematicians first came across the number pi, it made them question the existence of God. Pi is an irrational number, it goes on infinitely without any recurring pattern. So it made them wonder how there can be an all-knowing God if there are numbers that are by definition unknowable. Let us talk a little more about the number pi. It goes on to infinity in a seemingly random order. So it is possible that pi contains every single numerical combination that you can think of. It could contain the time and date of your death. It could contain the DNA information of everyone that has ever lived. It could, and mathematicians suspect that it does. Although it hasn't yet been proven, it is still amazing to think that the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of the football you play with could contain all the information of the universe. Yet, we choose not to be amazed by this and simply pass it off is another value we will never use after we pass the maths class that school forces us to attend. We could, be, we could learn a thing or two from maths if we chose to look beyond the superficial. When I was in the ninth grade, I got zero marks on a proof in a math exam. Not because I'd done it wrong, but because my method didn't match the one in the textbook. It wasn't the standard proof. It made me angry and a little sad too. I think we all remember the dress that went viral over the internet a while back. Some people thought it was black and blue. Others thought it was white and gold. I'm sure most of you opened social media around that time to be taken aback by the war that was raging. But very few of us stopped to think about why these contradicting viewpoints existed. Most of us were just busy expressing our own viewpoint in capital bold letters. This is just a mild example of how we, as a race, are naturally narrow-minded. We automatically tend to believe that our perspective is right and everybody else's is wrong. Maths is the universe's way of removing that misconception. There are hundreds of solutions to the same problem. They're just different outlooks on the same thing and they achieve the same purpose. This goes to show that just because two viewpoints are different, doesn't mean that they're contradicting or that one is superior. A lesson that humanity would do well to learn and one that maths has been trying to teach it all along. Take infinities. There are an infinite number of real numbers and an infinite number of natural numbers. Now the natural numbers form a countable infinity. This means that you can devise a pattern to write down all the natural numbers without having missed even one. However, in the case of real numbers, you cannot do so. You can never write down all the real numbers between two given real numbers. You will always have missed an infinite numbers in between. And thus, real numbers form an uncountable infinity. 
though they're both infinite, we see that some infinities are in fact greater than other infinities. So surely, when we achieve something and feel at the top of the world, we aren't really there. Surely there is someone far ahead of us, if even infinity has a greater infinity in comparison. A harsh lesson in humility. Let us talk about a problem called the Barber's Paradox. It is a simplified version of Russell's Paradox, which is a, which is a significant part of set theory. There is a town where all men are clean-shaven. Some of these men shave themselves and some don't. There is one barber in this town. His principle is that he shaves only and all of those men who don't shave themselves. Now this situation seems simple enough until the question arises, does the barber shave himself? If he does, then he falls into the category of men who shave themselves. But his principle is that he doesn't shave this category of people. Then again, if he doesn't shave himself, then he falls into the second category of people. And this is the one that the barber shaves. Thus, either way, we reach a contradiction. This is called a paradox. We can't get out of it, and we can't seem to figure out its answers. Thus, paradoxes help us come to terms with the fact that sometimes in life, we come across infuriating situations that keep going in circles. It is interesting to note that most of these paradoxes have led to breakthroughs in mathematics and true understanding of concepts. Thus, this concept also teaches us that it's solving the problems with no apparent solutions that lead to our tremendous growth as a person. They make us more open to challenges, and solving them helps us realize that just because a problem seems to have no solution doesn't mean that it can't be solved. How many of you feel that maths is not simple? OK, so essentially everyone. What e to the power i pi plus 1 is equal to 0 has been called the most beautiful or aesthetically pleasing equation by mathematicians all over the world. Why, though? Well, i, e is an irrational number of the value 2.7182 and on and on. Pi is also an irrational number. Iota or i is the square root of minus 1. It's an imaginary number. Yes, there are imaginary numbers too, as if maths wasn't already complicated enough, right? Well, the beauty of this equation lies in the fact that when 1 is added to an irrational number raised to the product of an irrational and imaginary number, the result is 0. One would expect that after performing such operations on such complicated numbers, the result would be chaos. Instead, it is simplicity. So no, maths is not complicated. Reaching an answer may be, but once you do, there is nothing as simple and elegant as mathematics. This is an equation. I'm sure no one here bothered reading the entire thing. It's far too complicated. Can anyone guess what the graph of this equation would look like? OK, yeah, well, it looks like this. This is called the Batman equation. It's the mathematical representation of Batman. So no, the equation was not simple at all. But if you had the patience to read it, understand it, and plot its graph, you would be amazed by the simply wonderful result it gave. Maths is a language. It is the language the universe was written in. Look around you. Do you see any geometrical shapes? Now, I don't mean that the pen in your pocket is cylindrical, and so the entire universe is governed by mathematics. But if you took this pen and you threw it, don't try it right now, then the path it would follow would be a perfect parabola. You could write a simple equation for its trajectory. We're all made up of atoms, and atoms are made of electrons. And electrons are represented by the Schrodinger equation. They have properties such as spin number and quantum number. All numbers, all described using maths. And thus, we can all be described using math. We live in space. And how is space described? By the number three. It is a combination of the three spatial dimensions. And thus, if space is de described using maths, and everything inside space is described using maths, then it makes sense to conclude that the universe is, in fact, described using maths. But there is a thing called the mathematical universe hypothesis that suggests that maths does more than that. That it doesn't just describe the universe, it is the universe. What it means? is that the universe is a mathematical construct. 
it's, it's a mathematical structure. And everything within the universe is a substructure. Now, the living beings like you and me are called self-aware substructures. According to this theory, all these self-aware substructures will perceive themselves to be living in a physically real world. But according to this theory, this perception is subjective. So if you're frustrated with maths, you become a frustrated mathematical object. And if you're amazed by this, like I am, then you become an awestruck mathematical object. Concluding, if you want to understand the bigger things in life, or the answers to the greater questions, turn to maths. After all, the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is the number 42. Thank you.